scary. I mean, it's scary. I'm in zone, uh, Texas zone 8B. Uh, this is a peach tree uh, that looked good. It was doing good, but you can kind of tell it's probably dead. Uh, we did have some really cold temperatures. There's a couple leaves over there. Uh, sometimes these trees don't always have a good, when it, it's a low chill uh, tropic snow. Sometimes they don't have a good low chill uh, hours so they, they tend to come out early i, I don't think they, they just have good winter protection but anyway it died for some reason uh i'll make sure it's dead i'll give it a little bit long, longer time and i dig it up see if it's maybe nematodes or whatever sometimes you just don't know sometimes they just die but anyway today i'm going to talk to you about topazio beans uh, from haas tools i'm going to be planting today and uh i'm going to plant six rows i've got these six rows dug up i do take one of those uh green water buckets i will run a uh water down it that does get me in good contact with the soil also the water in that water bucket is about 74 degrees i checked it and the soil temperature here is about 64. so it does give me uh, a little bit more uh, it should make the uh, uh, seeds sprout a little bit quicker germinate a little quicker uh anyway we're we'll planting six rows of of the uh uh, tapazio beans if i run out of seeds i'll plant another green bean on it i do use these as shell beans uh i know we'll, we'll let them grow up They'll, the beans will mature out but while, while the beans themselves inside are green we'll peel them and then you, you make it for you know cornbread and beans or whatever uh then i'm going to go another six rows and plant uh hickory king corn uh which you would plant about a month and a half later uh and then the other rows we're going to plant uh, Ohio blue corn. So this one space in here is one six rows to be out for a while. Uh, probably tomorrow I'll plant the Ohio blue corn. Uh, and then we got the small organic corn on down there. Now, when you have a, a, a garden this size, you're going to need some way to, to manage your weeds. Some people use uh, uh, weed fabric. I don't like it very well, and very few people that use it seems to really like it. It, it still allows grass to blow in, it, it, it blow, seeds blow in or whatever. So then you got a choice of well, how am I gonna keep the weeds out? You can try to use it with, with just a regular hoe, but that's gonna take a lot of time and it can get away from you in a hurry. Stirrup hoes work okay for small areas. Uh, when I first started, I, I had to make a decision. Was I gonna use a tiller? Cause the tiller's too big, it won't fit down these rows. So I couldn't use a regular size tiller. So I really had to either go with one of the small cultivators, uh, mantis type cultivators. Uh, but a lot of those are gas powered and, and they kind of pulverize the soil. So what I went with was, was Haas does make the, uh, the wheel hoe. Uh, I got the single wheel hoe. This does make it a lot faster. Uh, it's not hard, but it will give you a workout, but you don't want to wait till the weeds get big. You want, you want like all this garden here, it started, weeds just started growing up on it. I mean, just small weeds. At that point, you run one real hole over it. Uh, like I say, it's not hard, but it, it, it will give you an aerobic workout. Uh, but I've probably done this whole thing in probably 20 minutes, uh, actual push time. Uh, I think I've done it in two different sessions, whatever, because I'm out of shape. But it works good on small weeds. And as long as you keep the weeds small, as long as you keep that crust broke up, those weeds won't get a chance to germinate. Uh, so that to me is a secret to, to, to controlling the weeds that's in your garden when you got an in-ground garden is keep that soil roughed up at all times if it comes to rain makes that crust as soon as you can get in there to work it work that ground you're not really tilling the ground you're just breaking up that crust this thing's only go back maybe inch inch or so in the ground uh you just hit the top of it just to knock it up like i say just to knock that crust up because that's where the weeds like to grow and once you see the weeds growing if you're not careful, you see the weeds are this big, so well, I'm gonna weed it, and then you get you know a week of rain, which we get around here, and all of a sudden they're this big, and then you've lost it. Uh, I tried that the first year I gardened out here, and the weeds overtook it, and basically then you bring the lawnmower and mow it down, because there's not anything you can do once they get that big. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna plant these six rows, uh, and then I'll give you an update, showing as, as we go through through this, showing how, how this, this garden works. This is one part of the garden, and I've got the other parts over there. Uh, a lot of stuff starting to happen now. The, the pear trees are starting to bloom. Uh, I do expect to have a really good uh, uh, pear crop this year. This is uh, it, fourth, I guess five years. We planted those five mm -hmm. years ago. Uh, and they're starting to really bloom. And once they start blooming, they should start making good. The uh, plums just are, are bloomed real well this year. Uh, 
we don't seem like we're going to get a late frost. So uh, according to the long range forecast, you can believe that. Uh, so that's why I'm going ahead and planting stuff. Uh, but wherever you're at, before you go in there and, and, and try to, to plant like tomatoes or peppers or even the beans, look at the long range forecast. If they come back and show something in the 30s, you're best off to wait. Uh, with peppers, it's best off to wait to see anything below 45. I haven't planted my peppers yet for that reason because uh, they will get stunted and run it out the rest of the year. Uh, beans can't take a frost, so, you know, don't look at that forecast. They can be wrong. Last night, they were showing 38 degrees next Friday. Now, this is Saturday, so six days away. This morning, I looked at it, and they were showing like 41 or 42. It's okay, it's going the right way, and now they're showing 46. Well, I can handle 46 all day long, so... Uh, Again, look at long-range forecast uh, for, for zone 8B. It's that time. Uh, the early gardeners like me are starting to put stuff in the ground. Some people are want, wanting to wait a couple or three more weeks. I'm trying to beat the heat. And uh, so that's my philosophy. But my dad one time said, if you don't lose your garden to a frost here once in a while, you're not planting early enough. And I've kind of taken that to heart. There is some things you don't want to plant early. That's okra. Uh, you don't want to plant it early. Your field peas, you know, your southern peas, you don't want to plant those early because they don't like coast soils whatsoever. Uh, cucumbers, you want to wait a little bit for them because, they, you know, they, they don't like the, the cold at all either. So certain things you do want to wait on. But corn, I mean, corn can take, I was reading up on it, they said corn can take down like 28 degrees. So we're not going to get that. So that's why I'm planting this next round of corn. Uh, again, if you haven't watched the other videos, I'm going to be planting four different types of corn this year, and they're all going to be separated by time. And that's why I'm trying to keep them from cross-pollinating. I've got the one corn that's already up and growing. I plant another corn this week. In three weeks, plant the other corn. Three weeks after that, I plant the last, last corn. So anyway, uh, if you want to keep up with me, just subscribe. Uh, if you like it, click the like. Leave a comment. Uh, I'll, I'll get back with you. All right, this is Gary. Thank you for watching.